What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about tech earnings. We got to see what the biggest companies in the world, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, they all reported earnings yesterday, um, how they were doing in Q2 in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. And the truth is they are making billions of dollars, some of these companies soaring to all-time highs. So in today's episode, we are gonna leverage the power of HyperCharts to go through this financial data um, and see what is up and see what these companies reported, who's winning, who's losing, um, and what is driving, for instance, Apple to new all-time highs, hitting almost a $2 trillion market cap. Welcome to the world of hypercharts. Here we are, hypercharts.co. Um, Apple is the most valued company I'm following. As of today, it closed at 425.4 per share. This is an all-time high for the company. $1.84 trillion uh, market capitalization. The stock was up about 11% today, running into the close. So the market loved these results. Um, let's see what happened under the hood for Apple. So this is all of their financial data charted. Hypercharts, for those who don't know, my favorite tool. We built the thing that we thought needed to exist, partnered with Mo, who's an awesome developer, shout out to Mo, um, to bring Hypercharts to life about a year and a half ago, started with just five companies. Now we have over a hundred companies, their financial data, complex, hundreds of pages of SEC filings. We have turned into accessible charts and data for you here. I love this tool. I use it all the time to analyze my favorite company's financials. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm about to show you the power um, of this platform. So Apple, um, and I just think this is like one of the most amazing and exciting times to just analyze what the hell happened because, you know, finally, uh, you know, things really started to shut down late March, at least here in the US and for really all around the world. And so this quarter that we're about to see for all these major tech companies, um, it's funny that they report all on the same day, pretty epic. But, you know, now we actually get to see the impact of April, May, June, what happened when the global economy was shut down? How did that impact um, how these businesses were doing all the different segments, business units, profitability, all that, just such a fascinating business case study um, to watch real time. Let's start with Apple here. Apple uh, breaking down revenue in, in these five different segments. This is how they break it down. We're just vis visualizing this information. iPhone, the bulk of sales, actually a surprisingly weak point in the business here. Um, fiscal Q3, fiscal 20 Q3, that was the quarter they reported 26 billion down from, or up from 25 billion. So I guess up a little bit here, um, but marginally about flat. Apple's overall revenue was up 11%. We'll get to that in a second. Strong quarter for iPad, it looks like 4.8 billion to 6.5. We can go to Mac, another strong quarter for that too. Services this is the bright spot, um, you know, that recurring app store margin revenue, more software. Apple's constantly uh, touted transition from a software business to a hardware business. Service revenue, another strong quarter up to 13 billion. Um, then the other revenue, which includes AirPods, Apple Watch, that sort of stuff. My favorite kind of thing. I love my new AirPods, just obsess them, of course, who isn't? But uh, they ported 6.45 billion there in revenue up from 5.52 billion. So it's really strong quarter for Apple overall. If we go to the revenue, 11% growth, like I said, 59, almost 60 billion in revenue up from uh, the 53 billion in revenue that they had in fiscal 19 Q3. I mean, it's pretty epic to see that Apple was able to grow its top line. Remember, they had a ton of their stores shut down. Um, they even opened some and then reclosed a bunch. So even without that, Apple's been, been able to transition, you know, so much of their business online, despite having a global supply chain, building phones in China, they're still able to, you know, keep all of these systems up and running um, despite the global pandemic, it looks like, and actually grow all aspects of their business and do so profitably. Gross profit here, 22.6 billion up from 20.22 billion, so another big moving gross profit here. And then we got, you know, 13.019 billion in operating income up from 11.5 billion. So Apple's, you know, revenue and earnings here compounding at about 10%, a really strong quarter. Um, gross margin, operating margin, all pretty solid in line with what we're seeing historically. Here we can zoom in on the revenue growth um, just to show you where this was. Apple, you know, has actually continued to grow in every single quarter in this pandemic, 11% growth. They even grew about 0.5%. Um, in uh, last quarter. So Apple never had a declining year over year revenue quarter um, in the pandemic. And it looks like this will just continue. So pretty impressive. They're basically shrugging off all of the pandemic, uh, you know, 14.7 billion in free cash flow for the business. Literally in a quarter, they pumped out $15 billion of profit. That's why Apple's valued so highly. Their net cap cash position. I really like this chart for Apple because Apple's really interest, uh, unique in that they have so much cash. And it was like, Apple has so much cash. And then they started, it was in all these different countries around the world. Uh, I think a lot of it was even in like Ireland, but basically they started taking on debt to access this cash instead of repatriating it back to the US. And so they have a bunch of debt and a bunch of cash. So we added this special chart for Apple to make sure you could see with cash, with debt. And so you could get see that net cash position uh, to sort of get a clearer picture about what they were doing and their, their real like true net cash balance sheet position. Uh, because what Apple's doing, 
although their core business is pumping out, you know, that 15 billion in cash or whatever, as you can see, massive cash flow, um, they're buying back absurd amounts of stock. If we go here to the outstanding share count, they've massively decreased the amount of shares outstanding. And Apple is a huge company. For them to meaningfully materially decrease their share count is really impressive, hitting a, a low in years last quarter um, or this quarter of 4.3 billion. So that's a huge reason that's driving the value of Apple here. And for all those people who were like, the airlines were you know, buying back stock and at all time highs and look how much of a disaster it turned out to be. Apple is sort of an example, at least for now, we'll see how long this lasts, um, of a really accretive buybacks that they've made that over the long term historically have been a hugely accretive compounder for shareholder value have been these share buybacks. So Apple continued to pump out cash flow, continued to buy back stock. Um, and then we can also go, there was another big piece of news here. I just want to show you this feature. If you go to the overview side of stocks, we'll take you right to the investor relations side of each company's website. So you can see the press release um, that they had. Here's their official press release that Apple put out. Um, and I, I just wanted to go to a uh, big thing because this is the biggest news here. Apple approved a four for one stock split, um, making their stock more accessible to a broader base of investors. So this is interesting. Apple's done a bunch of stock splits in the past before. Basically, if you had, you know, a hundred shares, um, now you have 400 shares and the price of those shares gets, you know, goes to only 25% of what it was before is a fourth of what it was. And so this is just pretty normal. This is what happens when companies grow, the share price expands. So Apple's going to go from, I guess today, 425 bucks a share to trading at about, you know, 105 um, or 107 bucks a share. Um, when this split goes through, it looks like it's going to happen on the close of business on August 24th. So many people have been wondering whether Tesla should do a stock split, getting a little sidetracked here, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um, I've even put out a whole video about how Tesla should do a stock split. Um, but I actually think this is getting less and less relevant. And although I think it does help the valuation, like there's a weird psychological thing with the lower share price seemingly having more upside. I don't know if that really is a thing or not. Um, but I do think this whole thing of like, well, 1500 bucks to buy a share of Tesla is way too much for someone who's just getting started investing. You know, that's a ton of money um, for a single share. And so that's why I was really advocating for a stock split. That's why Apple's saying they did it to make their shares more accessible to a broader base of investors. But if you really think about it, you know, what is public? That an app I'm actually an advisor to, um, big fan of, this app that uh, allows free investing, sort of like Robinhood, um, I, I think a much better version, but they are awesome. And they came out with this feature that was fractional shares, basically allowing you to buy any stock um, for any amount of price. Like you can buy five bucks in Tesla, five bucks in Apple, doesn't matter the share price. They'll take and uh, do all of that accounting shortly after they launched that. Um, Robinhood launched that, Cash App launched that. Now everybody is seeming like there's ubiquity of this fractional share technology that allows you to buy in without even to purchase a whole share. So I think this whole idea of stock splits is a little bit irrelevant. Um, because of this new fractional share technology that is really emerging, becoming commoditized and ubiquitous. Anyway, that was Apple. Great quarter, 11% growth, shrugging off the epidemic. Let's roll with Facebook because social media has been really interesting. You know, um, Twitter, let's just actually, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom here. We're going to show the power of hyper charts. Twitter, massively bo booming user growth here in Q2, they reported, but look at their revenue. Revenue got hit really, really hard. Um, Twitter's revenue growth actually shrank fell off of a cliff. Revenue was down 18 or 19% in Q2 2020. This because really softness in the advertising market overall. So I think it's really interesting to comp all these social media companies. Snapchat here, um, revenue growth down off of a cliff to 17% from 44%. So then I was like, Facebook, let's see what happens with them. How big are they going to get hit from this revenue growth standpoint? Once again, they had really strong user numbers. Sorry, I'm scrolling fast here, but daily active users, really strong. This is a trend we're seeing across every social media site as the digitization of sort of technology and everything occurs. Um, more and more people are using and gravitating towards social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all seeing huge surges in user base, but not really correlating to surges in the financials exactly because of that softness in demand for the advertising market. So if we go to Facebook here, um, they were sort of in between Snapchat and Twitter, I would say, because their growth did fall off a cliff. Although their growth has been decelerating for a long time now, um, they still were able to grow 11%. I personally think a ton of this is Instagram. That's like the sweet spot of Facebook is, uh, you know, just, I don't know. I think Instagram is growing. It's a monster um, and it's embedded somewhere in their financials. They don't really break out core Facebook versus Instagram financials, but I think a lot of that is helping. Um, so we can go now check out the revenue or let, let, let's check out the years a little bit more. Um, almost 3 billion monthly active users here growing in every single region, which I think is pretty awesome. Europe here, Europe, I guess not growing very fast. US and Canada also growing much slower. Um, revenue still dominated by US and Canada revenue here. Um, Europe, Asia Pacific, other very small. Um, and then I thought this was interesting. Advertising is still pretty much the way Facebook makes all of their money, 
But the payments and other revenue did have a record quarter here, 366 million, um, growing really strongly, 262 million, way outpacing the advertising revenue growth. Still like a drop in the bucket compared to it, but something worth noting. Um, so Facebook, I don't know. They, I'm gonna give them a score of like, also just like Apple shrugging off this pandemic, having a beast of a quarter, despite softness in the whole advertising market. Facebook grows 11%. Look at this, their profit, they're making so much cash. Six billion in profit up from 4.6 billion last year. So they way increase in profit year over year. I mean, 19 billion in revenue. They brought home 6 billion from 19 billion, huge operating margins, massive profitability. You know, everything's headed in the right direction here. Just a great quarter for Facebook. Margins did get hit a little. They have been contracting from record highs, but still here, I mean, 31% operating margins. This is one of the most profitable companies that exists right now. 31 cents of every dollar in revenue is profit for this company. If we scroll down, um, to cash flow though, this is where things did get a little bit worse. Um, free cash or operating cash flow gets hammered um, and now goes down uh, to free and resulting in free cash flow of just 623 million. So I'm not exactly sure what this happened. Need to look a little more into it, but a very weak quarter from a cash flow perspective for Facebook. That's why their cash balance usually booming uh, went down a little bit there. Uh, so a solid quarter for Facebook. The stock right now at 253 bucks a share at eight uh, up 8% for the day. So the market loving this one, I'm pretty sure this is like all time highs for Facebook stock as well. So this is another one. Uh, the hypercharts hasn't even updated for the day, but this is where it's going to be when it ends the day. So Facebook stock, all time highs, Apple stock, all time highs, loving these earnings. Now let's get to potentially the most fun one of these Amazon. Amazon absolutely hit it out of the park. Um, you know, we all knew Amazon was having a ton of people heading into the quarter. Everybody was buying everything online. Um, so I think at a high level, you know, taking a step back, it should have been clear that they would have been a huge, huge structural winner, perhaps the biggest big tech winner from COVID. But man, did they deliver Amazon with a, a monster quarter. The market loves it. Up 3.6% today, over 3,000 a share, 1.58 trillion market cap. Amazon, just a rock star quarter. I mean, just to visualize before I even tell you what the growth was, Q2 record 55.4 billion in North American sales. And look at the seasonality here. They bucked the seasonality trend. They've totally distorted a massive multi-year long pattern in their financials because of how abnormal this was. Um, so usually Q4 is by far the strongest for Amazon. You know, Q1, uh, Q4 is the strongest, then Q1 goes down, then it builds back up to massive Q4 holiday season, all that kind of stuff. But here Q1 dips down, Q2 you'd expect to be like down here, you know, at this level, no. 55 billion way up here, the highest ever, totally bucking seasonality because everybody is buying everything online. And so that is just a huge, huge deal. International sales seeming a very, very similar trend, not quite a record beating Q4, but still a massive upswing. If you include Forex, it would have been even more impressive. AWS, monster behemoth, 10.8 billion in revenue at well, like a $44 billion revenue run rate almost. I mean, this is just huge AWS probably worth two, three, four, five, six hundred billion um, on its own right now. So this is another way that Amazon breaks down revenue. I love the way they give us so much data. It's just so much fun. So online stores, I guess it's their bread and butter, just online e-retailer business, monster, pretty much record quarter, bucking that seasonality trend. Physical stores got hammered. Um, they do on Whole Foods, Amazon Books, that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, interesting to see this get hit. I did, you know, my Whole Foods uh, back when I was in New York was always packed, but I guess that didn't help that much. Um, the closures still net net bad for that physical store business. Third party resellers monstering. This is still bad on e-commerce. If we go to subscription and services, 6.01 billion, a record here. This is really a nice, a nice consistent growth here in this chart. AWS, same thing again here, over 10 billion. It's the same in that other chart. Other revenue, a lot of this they say is advertising. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how much. I think it could be over half of this. So advertising business link, it's been really growing and really profitable for Amazon. So now let's move into the whole income statement overall. 88.9 billion in revenue for Amazon, a record quarter, just monster, monster quarter for Amazon. I mean, almost a 400 billion run rate, or not quite, but you get the point. 360 billion, 350 billion revenue run rate. Uh, massive quarter growing, bucking that seasonality trend. Gross profit also just booming here. So despite this hiring, I mean, Amazon's operating income, a record 5.8 billion in profit in the quarter, 24 billion operating income run rate here almost for Amazon. I mean, this is huge, huge profitability numbers. So despite having so many people, despite expanding like crazy, Amazon just had so much more flowing through their system that they couldn't help but make a ton of more money, a record profit this quarter. The underlying thesis here, what do we see? Apple, huge profits, shrugging off the epidemic, 11% growth. Facebook, 11% growth, shrugging off the epidemic. Amazon, 40% growth, record profits, making billions. 
So Amazon's making billions, in many ways validating the thesis here that so many people have for Amazon that once they stop growing, once they have more flowing through their system, economies of scale, a lot of this incremental growth is gonna drop right to the bottom line and the true intrinsic earnings and cash flow power of Amazon is way higher than the income statement would insinuate. And I think this quarter in many ways starts to validate that theory on a lot of levels. That's why Amazon stock is absolutely booming. It's becoming like the most critical piece of infrastructure in our whole economy. Let's think about it. We need to get stuff around. We can't rely on physical stores anymore. There are many of them are closing, they're temporarily or even permanently. Like Amazon is becoming a crucial piece of urban infrastructure or just you know, entire infrastructure and logistics infrastructure for, the, and not even just the U.S., for many countries in the whole world, um, a very strategically and structurally important asset um, just to make our lives function on a really smooth basis. So I think that gets overlooked a little bit, but Amazon's like structural importance from a political and societal level is even, you know, just went doubled or tripled in the wake of this pandemic. Operating margins here, we're seeing also that uh, huge improvement up to 6.5%. Amazon very uh, quietly under our nose is getting super profitable. That revenue growth soaring. This wasn't really organic. This was because they bought Whole Foods that spiked the revenue growth rate, but here 40% revenue growth. Um, a record for Amazon, just in a monster quarter cash flow, 20.6 billion in cash flow in a quarter. Annualized, we're talking about 83, 82, 83 billion dollars annually in cash flow run rate. I don't think this will be the cash flow situation every quarter. You know, it's super lumpy. Uh, they, but wow, I mean. This is why Amazon is valued at so much. And I think, um, you know, this is the first metric Amazon puts in their uh, investor documents. I'll show you in a second. 71 billion in cash, um, outstanding share count, market cap. Now, I, I wanna show you something really quick. Go to the overview. This is a very interesting clue about how Amazon thinks about its business. You go to their investor relations site. Amazon is gonna have a, uh, a presentation here and the way that they posture their metrics, the metrics they show you first, what is the first metric Amazon always talks about? Operating cash flow. Operating cash flow increased 42% to 51.2 billion for the trailing 12 months. This is how to think of Amazon's valuation. They are telling you ca operating cash flow is our metric, 51.2 billion. I believe about a 30X multiple, 25 to 30X multiple to operating cash flow is historically what Amazon's traded at. That's at the sweet spot for the valuation. That's what the market thinks it's worth. And that is sort of a great barometer to justify and value this company. Maybe price sales works too. Um, but just because you know their income statement, they're not really valued on earnings. You know, Amazon made 14 billion in earnings last year. They're valued at like 1.5 trillion, like 100x. You know, price EBIT, but operating cash flow 51.2 billion. The valuation started to make a lot more sense, and it's a way to start thinking about the company as if they weren't investing like crazy in growth. How profitable could they be? The market has decided to buy this metric, in my opinion, and give Amazon a pass on low earnings because of this operating cash flow being so strong. So. That's just me getting sidetracked, something known on Amazon. Now, the last one for the day, let's go into Alphabet. Everyone else crushed it. I feel a little bad because Alphabet um, didn't actually crush it that hard this quarter, so sorry. Um, but that is what it is. Lot, lots of insight to be gained. So here's Alphabet. This chart looks a little bit funny. This is something to note on hyper charts. Um, you know, a lot of companies change their disclosure for how they break down revenue segments all the time. It's actually really complicated to keep up with. And so hypercharts here, you can tell that Google has recently made a change in how they bucket out revenue. They took out cloud from their other revenue segment and you know, switch some other things around. And so now as they're slowly reporting each quarter of that segmented revenue, we're filling it in, but for now it's not totally filled in. That's why it looks funny. Anyway, getting sidetracked. But the point is here, Google's financials breakdown. I kind of want to zoom in just on the cloud business because it's interesting. I think that's it was so big they couldn't not break it out. Basically, wow, booming three billion up from a uh, two point one billion. So really strong cloud growth. YouTube ads. That's funny because we're on YouTube. YouTube ads. How I do that. How I do it. Three point six to three point eight. So really weak YouTube uh, ad growth. My YouTube ads got crushed in the quarter. Um, CPM's revenue per view got hammered because I think a lot less you know advertisers were paying for all these advertising slots. Um, and that just is what it is because, you know, that's the first thing people pulled back on their budget was marketing, advertising spend. That's why we saw Facebook revenue growth decline, Snap, Twitter, and YouTube all in that social media bucket. Scrolling down to revenue operating income, Google 38.2 billion down from 38.9. Ooh, Google shrinking, not good. So Google's revenue is about down about 1%. Operating income here down to 6.38 billion, uh, you know, down from 9.1. So Google's business did get hurt here. You know, Google not crushing it. Still profitable, but gross margins hitting lows. Operating margins trending downward as well. Uh, you know, revenue growth here. They were Google was already kind of slowing down its revenue growth anyway. But man, to go negative, I I cannot remember Google ever showing negative revenue growth. This might be the first time like ever in company history. 
but they did not grow revenue year over year, down 2%. So still very uh, profitable from a cash flow perspective, 14 billion, still got 121 billion in the bank, no problem for Google. But I think there's a reason why the stock price has not done so well, down 3% today, while all their other counterparts who reported these quarters were up huge, some of whom to record highs. So there is your recap, folks. In the midst of this global pandemic, I thought so many companies were gonna get crushed, hammered, a lot of them are, but not big tech. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet. Alphabet, not doing too hot, but the other three crushing it. You know, all growing, all making billions of dollars. Amazon, record revenue, record profits. Apple growing 11%. Facebook growing 11%. Still able to grow profits at a huge clip. I mean, these tech companies are shrugging off the global pandemic, continuing to make billions. Um, and many of their stock prices have quickly rebounded from the, that pullback just a couple months ago and are already back making new all-time highs. The tech side of the economy is stronger than ever. Software is eating the world. These companies that we thought were crazy for hitting a trillion dollar market cap, many of whom are already closer to two trillion than one trillion now. And I think this is just the beginning of you know a massive wave of tech titans, oligopoly, monopolies, whatever you want to call them, all being worth a couple trillion dollars each soon here in the near future. I think it's only a matter of time before we get our first $5 trillion tech company. That's a video for another time. This is HyperChange. Thank you so much for tuning in. HyperCharts, you guys got to go check it out. HyperCharts.co. You can find all your favorite companies, follow their financials, their earnings reports. Um, I want to give you a sneak peek at a new feature we're working on. Here's the Tesla page. Um, if you go to the financials, You'll notice something here, community forecast. Um, this is a way for that you can actually publish your estimates for companies' financials. This is a new feature for hypercharts for premium users. So I'm actually working on estimating uh, the Tesla's financials for 2020, 2021, and their deliveries. I'm gonna put that all in hypercharts, make a whole video about it. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned to that if you haven't already. Go to hypercharts.co slash premium if you want a free trial of hypercharts premium. Play, off, play around with all these power features that I just showed you. Um, but anyway, this is it to sum it up. Oh, I'm gonna leave you guys with another chart here on hypercharts from compare mode, which shows the market cap. Now this isn't the at market cap today. This is the average market cap throughout the quarter um, for these tech companies. So you can see it's kind of the smoothed out version of how much they're worth over time since 2016. You can see the, the rise of these companies going from way, you know, we just had a couple companies all fighting for that trillion. Now a bunch of them has crossed the trillion dollar mark on their way to two trillion. Um, this is just getting started. Tesla here still straggling there at 150 weighted in Q2, but this is about to rocket. We'll see how fast they can catch up. But anyway, this is HyperChange. Would love to know what you think in the comments below about HyperCharts. We look, get all your feedback. That's how we've chosen which companies to expand, which features to build. Let us know what you want because um, we love hearing from y'all. Thank you so much. See y'all next time. Peace.